going to media day what is one thing that you heard kirk say that you kind of like what was one like happy thing you were excited to hear kirk saying was there anything that you thought was kind of like weird that you're gonna say if that makes sense you know what i'm saying <laughs> weird. Like, why do you not think really weird, not weird. Really weird but like but like you uh like, kind of like i don't know i don't like that he said that or i don't know if i like that he said that kind of thing I don't know what he liked if he said that. I'll tell you this. Uh, let's start. You want to start with the good or the or the negative? Either one. You choose. It's your show, so you choose. Let's start with the. Let's start with the negative because uh, I want to fill most of the show with the positives. There's not much negative to talk about in Big Ten Media Days because when you're at Media Days, everybody's great. All the players are fantastic. The coaches are, you know, godsends, etc. As far as negatives, though, I, the only thing I would have I wish that Kirk didn't do, and I know it's easy for us. We we criticize people all the time. This is kind of the job of a analyst or talking head or whatever you want to consider me. The going back to defend past offenses. I had a problem with that to an extent. Um, he was asked, as you knew he would be, he was asked about the offense and the future of the offense and how they've changed the offense. And I wish that Kirk would just focus on and embrace Yes, we're making changes. Just embrace it. Whether you're actually doing it or not, just embrace it. You've made changes via personnel, whether you wanted to or you were forced to or whatever. The scheme's looking different. The play calling's going to look different. They haven't done anything with the coaching staff. But I just wish that that he hadn't made comments like we were pretty good offensively until the last couple of years. That's just hogwash. They, they have not been pretty good offensively until the last couple of years. They've been below average offensively almost his entire tenure. That is a fact. Go back and look at the numbers. So I just, I don't like that quote. Um, and once again, he brought up injuries at wide receiver last spring. And I'm talking like 2022 spring. He brought up the offensive line as reasons why. Again, no explanation as to why the offensive was, line was just so bad, except because they had inexperience. Why'd they have inexperience? Why weren't there older guys that were developed and stuck around the program? Again, accountability, I think, is lacking there. He compared 2021 to 2009. Not sure what the comparison was there. They couldn't run the ball for nothing in 2009. Go back and look at the data in that year with Adam Robinson and Brandon Wager. Uh, they weren't effective. Those two were promising young freshmen. But that was not a great offensive team. They had really good receivers. But they had a tremendous defense led by guys like Adrian Claiborne. And yes, they won an Orange Bowl. But just because you compare some data from 21 to 2009 when they happened to win an orange bowl does not mean anything to me. Um, so I, I, you know, again, th this is how Kirk looks at it. He looks at it from a macro standpoint. And I understand that perspective. We've been saying this for months. I try to look at football from a micro standpoint and from a unit by unit standpoint. And it's convenient for Kirk I'm not saying he's being disingenuous at all. I think this is how he looks at things, but that would be the only thing. I, I just I wish that he could just say, you know, we weren't good offensively. He did say that at one point. I wish he could just leave it at that and say, we're making adjustments here, here, and here, or even say, hey, we've made some changes as we do every year. You're going to have to wait and see what they were. He kind of said that, but I just wish that we didn't have to keep bringing up injuries and the young offensive line and all this ridiculousness. Uh, he did cite one other thing, James, before I move on to, to greener pastures. I don't know if you caught this, but I don't know if it was one of the side interviews or if it was when he was uh, talking uh, on the podium. But he did bring up the Nebraska game and how he kind of felt like that game slipped away. And it did. Absolutely did. And he brought up Cooper DeGene going down with an injury. He brought up uh, – who else went down with an injury in that game? Uh, someone else going down with an injury. And then he brought up Spencer Petrus. And he talked about how you know we just, we just weren't able to finish uh, and we weren't able to recover uh, with – those guys going down and you know to lump Spencer and I understand he has to do it from a politically correct standpoint he lumps Spencer in with the importance of Cooper DeGene Spencer was like one of seven to start that game if you recall and one of the few reasons Iowa even had a chance to come back late in the game I think was because of Alex Padilla so as, as bad as Padilla was at times I thought that was a little bit of an unfair comment to Alex now he you know Alex is down at SMU now anyway so I guess it doesn't matter that would be the only criticism I have of, of Kirk Ferentz today you asked for it. I, I don't even know if I would have brought it up had you not asked. But uh, as far as positives are concerned, uh, Kirk spoke very highly of both the running back room and the tight end room. Not at all surprised that he would speak highly of the tight end room. 
But when he lumped the running back room in with the tight end room, not saying he concluded that, yeah, you know, there was or declared that those two position groups are neck and neck, but running back's a totally different looking room, a lot more youth. Uh, you've got two veterans in Luke Lachey and Eric Alt at the forefront of the tight end room. And you got Caleb Johnson, who's a true sophomore, leading the charge at running back. Jazzy and Patterson, who's on the the two deeps, three deeps, kind of with with the running back room, he's a, a true sophomore. So I'm surprised that he did that, but that may that gives me optimism that he thinks this running back room can be pretty darn good. That's not shocking to me, but that that's a pleasant surprise. We hope that pans out. Of course, we haven't started fall camp yet. You know, the 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 talk about Jay Higgins, there were a lot of questions about him, uh, and rightfully so because he's kind of flown under the radar with. Jack Campbell and Seth Benson being at the forefront of that linebacker room for several years. I think Jay Higgins might be a little better than I've given him credit for based on the commentary and the dialogue. He thinks that the O line's going to be better. He thinks Connor Colby is going to be a lot better. He thinks Logan Jones is going to be a lot better. Once again, he talked about youth. He thinks they're a lot older this year. A lot of the guys are going into year three. And although he says that, you know, usually you don't get great until years four or five, uh, he thinks uh, those guys will take a big jump this year. And, you know, Dejon Parker's back healthy. Um, they, they've got a group, to, you know, they got Rusty Feth that's joined the mix. So all those things are good. I mean, uh, it's hard to pick a lot of bad things from Big Ten media days. 